A few years ago, we created a new way to bring in the High Holy Days, one evening service, the whole Road of Shalom community together in one room. It was a good move for many reasons. We were able to create a service that emerged out of our regular Shabbat worship, a service that looked and sounded like Road of Shalom congregation as we have grown to know it. Buoyed by that change, we plan to unveil another new service this year. Instead of two simultaneous morning services, one in the sanctuary and one in Freehoff Hall, we would all have been together in one room, the sanctuary. And our service would have had music and readings and participation that was organic and true to whom we are today. But COVID-19. In today's pandemic reality, we're in a new kind of diaspora, scattered into our homes for safety's sake. We might think that the High Holy Day services we are about to embark upon are not at all what we had planned. After all, we are not in the magnificent sanctuary together and we miss one another and we miss our choirs and the charged atmosphere and we might even miss the uncomfortable seats. But it's more likely we miss the people with whom we shared those seats. And yet, as we have learned new ways to be together in other aspects of our lives, we will learn how to be together for these high holy days. We, did not share, we do not share physical space, but we do share the power of this moment, this precipice, this threshold of a brand new year. And so with hearts filled with gratitude for everything we do have and for the opportunity to begin anew, we share the blessing for this very moment of blessing. Please join Molly and Greg in Shehachianu.
Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu, yihi ratzon shenizka livrotecha, b'shnat chameshed alafim u'shva me'ot u'shmonim v'echad. Our God and God of our ancestors, may we know your blessings in the year 5,781. Eternal One, bless us with, and the whole house of Israel with renewed life, happiness, and peace, comfort, and courage, resilience, and strength. May the words of our hearts be acceptable to you in the new year that stretches before us. We are forever grateful for the gift of life. Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Bidvaro Ma Ariv Aravim, Pochma Poter Sharim, Uvit Vuna Mishana Itim, Machalif et Hazmanim, Umisader et Hakohavim, Bamish Merotehem Barakia Kirzano, Bore Yom Valila, Golel Orbmi Pne Hoshech, Behoshech Mipne Or, Uma Avir Yom Ume Vilila, Umavdil Ben Yom Uvein Lida, Adonai Tsva Ochmo. Achai v'kayam tamid imloch alenu le'olam va'ed. Baruch atadonai hama'ariv aravim. Shema
at the end of the Israelites' 40-year journey. You have stayed long enough in this place, God said. Time to go forward. Turn your face to the future. Believe that you can cross this sea and survive. Inside you is a Moses. Within you, Miriam dances, unafraid. Lift up your voice and sing a new song.
Davis wrote these words. For us, the Book of Life has been reduced to words of casual welcome, spoken or written on greeting cards. L'shana tova tikatevu. May you be inscribed for a good year. When we hear those words, we ought not to imagine a ledger in the skies where our fate is written, signed, and sealed. Rather, l'shana tova tikatevu. Those words are a symbol. They say to us, we are recorded. What we say is more than words whispered into the wind. What we are is something more than pebbles on a beach. What we do has an effect. Please turn to page 42 and rise in body or spirit. Adonai sefatai tivtach ufi yagiti latacha. Adonai open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Velohei avoteinu v'imoteinu Elohei Avraham Elohei Yitzchak Elohei Yaakov Elohei Sarah Elohei Rivcha
Moschiaum gehen, Baruch hat Adonai. Magin Abraham bezrat Sarah. Ata gibor le'olam Adonai, mechayi hakol ata rav Morir hatal mechal kel chayim bechesed mechayi hakol berachamim rabim somich noflim brofecholim umatir asurim umikayim. You and you alone, Adonai, will reign over creation. Upon Mount Zion, home of your presence, and in Jerusalem, a city set apart by you. As the psalmist believed, Adonai will reign eternally. Your God, Zion, for all generations. Hallelujah. Adosh For this blessing, the amens that you will hear will be the voices of the members of our choir, Rodef Shira. Zohrenu Adonai Eloheinu Bo Tova, eternal our God, remember us. Amen. Uvokdenu vo livracha, be mindful of us. Amen. Vohoshienu vo lechaim, and redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Amen. Help me to serve you truly with purity of heart. When I hear hateful or degrading speech, let me focus on good words and worthy thoughts. When my worst instincts cause me torment, teach me to care for myself and for others. In rough waters and misfortune, let me harbor patience and strength. Make my soul a sanctuary, that your light may dwell within me align all my acts in pursuit of goodness so I may be a vessel of holiness serving you with purity and truth. Oh. 
Great is peace, for all blessings flow from peace. Great is peace, for without peace no blessing is complete. Great is peace, for even in times of war the hope for peace remains undiminished. Great is peace, for peace is granted to those who repent. Great is peace, for peace is the inheritance of the righteous. Peace is great, for peace is granted to those who love and study the Torah. Great is peace, for peace is granted to the humble. Great is peace, for peace is granted to those who do justice. Great is peace, for God's name is peace. Great is peace, for peace is equal in weight to all of the works of creation. Great is peace, for even heaven needs peace. Behold, if peace is needed in heaven, where neither hatred nor strife is found, how great the need for peace on earth, where hatred and strife abound. continue now by turning our thoughts to those among us, the ways in which we ourselves and those members of our family, wider circle of friends, the members of our congregation, wider community, those throughout our country and world are in need of healing, are in need of repair, restoration of spirit if not body. And we share together the beautiful words and melody of Misha Berach as we pray that they might have healing hope, renewal, and peace.
מלכינו, הננו מלך אל האתה. אבינו מלכינו, למענך רחם עלינו. אבינו מלכינו, עשה עמנו למען שמך. אבינו מלכינו, שלח רפואה שלמה.
Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Happy New Year. Thank you. I'm glad to be with you and back in the sanctuary and celebrating Rosh Hashanah together. So, um, you know, I always teach, I teach this pretty much every year about how Shana means year, but it also has the same root, the same three letter root as change and, and repeat, which is kind of weird, right? Like it's two opposite things at the same time. So we get this idea about, um, we can keep repeating things every year and have the same year over and over again, or we can use the new year as an opportunity to change. So really when we say Shana Tova, it's a kind of a shorthand. It's supposed to echo our feelings about, may you have a good year, a healthy year, a year of growth, a year of opportunity. We wish this to our friends as well as people throughout the world. Yes, and this year the greeting feels different. This year as we approach Rosh Hashanah and the new year, it feels different somehow. It is different. Um, for one thing, we're sitting here alone in a room. Right. <laughs> so it is very different this year. And I think since March, we've all been living with an awareness of our own fragility, our mortality, our vulnerability. Some of us are struggling with the difference. Some of us are actually suffering with loneliness and isolation. And then there's those of us who've been living for six months with our nearest and dearest. Hi guys, I love you. <laughs> but it's a lot. These last six months, since March, have been so completely different than anything we knew before. It's almost as if the year is two halves. From Rosh Hashanah to Passover felt normal, certainly as we recall it, and since Passover, now till Rosh Hashanah, it's been a completely different experience. It strikes me that in a very significant way, we can think of 5780, the Jewish year that's now ending, as cleaved in two. And it's almost, I'm reminded, of the story of the tablets that are put into the ark. Yeah. There are the intact set of tablets, or the whole months that we remember, the first half of the year, and there are the broken tablets, the fractured months, these last six months, and they're also put into the ark, and we're told that they're placed side by side, and we remember them both. One of the things that's remarkable that I've heard people talking about is how much this second half of the year has made people aware of what others live with all the time. For example, loneliness or lack of access to certain things. It's, sort of, it's, it's made us more aware of things that we took for granted. I think it's an interesting way for us to think about entering the new year because we have both halves of the year to, to, to consider as we're moving into the new year. All the things that we learned from being in isolation or seclusion or however we want to say that, but all the things that we learned in the first six months, all of it can be um, helpful to us as we think about entering the new year. What, what do we want for the new year? How can we take what we've learned in all of its ups and downs, highs and lows, and move into the new year with some optimism and some hope and some assurance that we can, we can have all the control, but there's a lot about the new year that we can uh, make for ourselves. I'm struck by the number of things I never even realized I was taking for granted. Preacher comforts and simple things that now on reflection I miss terribly and realize I had underappreciated then. It occurs to me that as different as this year feels, in many ways it's the same old story, right? Every year has highs and every year has lows and we're challenged to be who we can be each and every year, even as this year feels particularly distinct. Yes, and, thank you for that. You know that teaching that says every time we come to a Torah portion, we would see something new because we're not the same person as we were last year when we read that portion? So I think that's the case for the High Holiday Liturgy. Every year, we're going to read it with different eyes because of the experiences that we've had. The experiences have been so different this year that I think the High Holiday Liturgy will be quite different for people, and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to hearing what people have to say about that. The Unitana Tokef comes to mind, the right. central prayer about who shall live and who shall die. 
has different resonance right. this year. Right, right. Who by water? Who by fire? Who, who by, by illness? Who, who by, by plague? Right, right. right. You can't hear those words this year and not think of them in a new way and understand their resonance and what they meant for generations past, what it means for each of us now. If we come out of this experience and we're not different as a result of it, then we didn't do it right. right. It should make us more empathic, more appreciative and grateful and more committed to making our lives each and every day of them purposeful and maximizing the potential they have for, for blessing and for meaning and goodness. I agree with that. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'd like to wish all of you a Shana Tova and to thank our rabbis, our staff, our musicians, and our volunteers, all of whom work tirelessly so that we can continue to connect and learn and worship. Last Rosh Hashanah, we were still reeling from the tragic events of October 27, 2018. We reflected on the way in which our community responded with support and love. We were proud to have opened our doors and our hearts to other congregations. We struggled with keeping our congregants, our staff, our students, and our visitors safe and secure while remaining a welcoming place. We spoke about a new normal. And so today, a year later, there's a new new normal and new dimensions to keeping us safe and secure and healthy. This year, we're not hugging or shaking hands with one another. We're not singing shoulder to shoulder, and we just plain miss being together. Our new normal arrived quickly and continues to unfold rapidly. It's propelling us toward a future that is hazy at best. Amid the haziness, though, I know that we're holding fast to our core values. To be a congregation rooted in learning and practice, a congregation of caring, and a congregation that takes our sustainability seriously. Six months ago, we made the decision to close the building and conduct services, classes, and events virtually. And then something interesting and important happened. In the midst of not being able to be together within these walls, we took opportunities to see beyond them. Through a personal connection with the Falk Laboratory School, we worked out a plan to locate their 140 middle schoolers in our classrooms. This partnership plays to our strengths as a collaborative leader in the Pittsburgh community, will allow us to be good neighbors as we help Falk to socially distance their students and faculty, and affords us with additional security and expertise the school and university will provide, all the while helping to balance our budget. Living in a pandemic is disruptive and challenging, but at the same time, it forces us to think about what we do, what we aspire to do, and what we might do differently. With the departure of our executive director at the end of July, the officers of the board have formed a team to work closely with our rabbis, our staff, to manage, lend support, and better understand where we are and where we might go from here. We believe that it provides us with an opportunity to strengthen the bonds among congregants, volunteers, lay leadership, staff, and rabbis. In a time when we are all seeking meaningful connections, we're working to highlight and strengthen them within our congregation and beyond our walls. Indeed, you'll be proud to know our lay and professional leaders have used the last six months to reimagine the ways in which Road of Shalom will meet the challenges of the moment. Some of this activity has been in service of right-sizing our organizational chart and payroll. We've reduced our staffing, and many others have taken pay cuts while we protect our most vulnerable earners. Just as in the aftermath of October 27th, and somehow through this pandemic and internal challenges, with the grace and dedication of our rabbis, Rabbi Bisno, Rabbi Henry, Rabbi Friedman, and Rabbi Jacob, and with our staff and lay leaders, we've managed to rethink the way we serve our congregation and community. Our family center preschool is balancing health and safety with meeting our children's need for socialization and education. Our joint Jewish education program is beginning virtually and planning optimistically to be able to be in person in the not too distant future. Youth programming is in place for all children in grades K through 12. Worship services, complete with bar and bat mitzvahs, continue to bring us together, if only virtually. 
Volunteers continue to reach out to members of the congregation to see if there are any immediate needs, to wish a good new year, and even to make sure that they have a plan to safely vote in November. In partnership with our rabbis and staff, our prayer practice and learning committee is working hard to ensure that programs continue. The security task force, still doing the work of figuring out that balance of keeping us safe and welcoming, has taken on the new role of advising us on operating within the pandemic. While we realize that we have important logistical decisions to make to flourish in this new normal, we need to continue doing the hard work of envisioning what this new normal can mean for us. And we recognize that we can't solve our problems alone. At Rabbi Bisno's encouragement, I've been meeting regularly, virtually that is, with the presidents of the congregations in the area, reform, conservative, and reconstructionist. We've got begun to talk about ways that we can meaningfully collaborate. And frankly, we realize that these discussions should have started a while ago. As you know, we still do not know when we will be able to congregate in this magnificent space. Allegheny County has gone green, but that's not necessarily a green light for us. All of us, rabbis, lay leadership, and staff, are committed to keeping our congregation safe and healthy. And trust me, we understand that for many, the inability to be in physical proximity is extremely challenging. So, in addition to wishing us all a new year of peace, health, and justice, I wish us all a year of renewed and meaningful connections. Shana Tova. Continue now in our service with a moment for memory as we turn our thoughts to those who have departed this earth, members of our own family and our wider circle of friends, the members of our community whom we have lost in this last year, and those of every race and every nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we turn our thoughts to each of them, their lives and their legacy, we share the ancient and hallowed words of Kaddish. Yitkadal, Vietkadash Shame Rabba, Bi Alma Divra Kirute, Viamlich Mahute, Bachayekon Vyomekon, Uvchaye de Ho Bait Yisrael, Bagala Vizman Kariv, the Imru, Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mavarach, Le Alam Alme Almaya, Yitbarach, Vishtabach, Vietbar, Vitramam, Vietnase, Vita Dar, Vitale, Vitalal. Shme Duhudsha Brihu Leila Wileila Mikol Berhata Vishirata Tushbahata Benechamata Da Amiran Bielma Vi Imru Amen Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya Vachaim Alenu Vakol Yisrael Vi Imru Amen O Se Shalom Bimromav Huya Se Shalom Alenu Vakol Yisrael Bakol Yoshve Tevel, the Imru. Amen. May the source of peace, who creates peace in the high heavens, grant peace to each of us and to our world, and we say, Amen.
Ratzon milfanecha Adonai Eloheinu velohe avotenu v'imotenu shetekadesh aleinu shana tova umetuka. Our God and God of our ancestors, eternal God of all generations, may your presence in our lives this new year renew our spirits and renew our strength. May it be a good year. May it be a sweet year. L'shana tova tekatevu May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year, a year of blessing. Amen. We have completed this day of the new year. And as we look back on it, we have to say to ourselves, we really haven't done everything we should have done on this New Year's Day. And each of us, I'm sure, can say that. And each of us, therefore, still looks forward to Yom Kippur to take the next day seriously and to amend our lives and to bring us truly closer to God and to each other. <laughs> 